Yesterday, one of the one of the coolest things happened. We were doing the uh, we were doing pep we were harvesting peppers, mm -hmm. and over over that tree line right behind you came a um, like a parachute with a mm -hmm. motor on the back. Have you seen those things before? I think I, saw, I think I saw it when I was over here, like mm -hmm. one guy hanging from it. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a. I thought it was a hot air balloon at first. Uh, I saw it when I was up. Where was I? Oh, I was when I was uh, working in the upper field up there. Uh huh. I, I thought it was a balloon at first. I thought, oh, it's too small for. Me. All right, so I'm down here picking uh, picking some jalapenos right now, and the coolest thing, I just saw like one guy flying over the field in like a parachute with like a motor on it. And then I thought it was really cool, and I was gonna go up and fly my drone over there and get him, but they were flying way too fast, and I couldn't catch up to it. And then a second one came by. It was freaking awesome. I think it's probably one of the coolest ways to fly over Illinois and see the see the landscape. It's one of these parachute helicopter motor boat. I'm not sure what these things are. They, it's awesome. Man, what is that? It's tatsoi. Tatsoi? Tatsoi's as big as your head. Great for stir fries. <laughs> Today is Friday, and we're harvesting for our 16th farmer's market. We're getting some choy right now. Um, try to cut them so we don't cut these little guys so we get re good regrowth here. Primo, primo. Primo kale. How can we uh, how can we put these on the racks? So we're trying to basically we're trying to cure them. Um, 
ideally we would um, like put them in a greenhouse and get the temperatures up to 90 degree temperature and 90 degree humidity for seven to ten days that that'd be the ideal temperatures but since that's too hard to do with this mini squash we just try to leave them out in the sun let them bake a little bit it'll it'll harden off the skin so they'll store better and um, it should on some varieties like the butternuts and the kabocha it actually should improve the flavor as well it should uh, stimulate uh, sweetening on those uh, the pie pumpkins and the anything that's in the pepo family so what? acorn squash the kukurubita pepo Pepo? Which is, yeah, Pepo is the, the um, species name. And that's, that's the Delicata, the Acorn, and the Pie Pumpkins are all Pepos. They don't really sweeten up, but at least we can get the, the skins to, to harden off a little bit more. So yeah, we roll them out when it's sunny, and then uh, if it's going to rain, we'll roll them back in. Or later on the season, if it's getting starting to get cold. We also, they're kind of like sweet potatoes in that we don't want them to get down into the... Uh, into the mid 50 or low 50s anything under there will affect the storability and eventually the flavor so they're actually mm. pretty similar to sweet potatoes in a lot of ways you can see the see the bees buzzing around the butternuts yeah there's a lot that's, of bees out here that's proof of, proof of sweetness and judging by where the bees are it looks like maybe the butternuts are sweeter than the cobble All right, so after harvest yesterday, um, Henry had set me up with a 50-50 mixture of hairy vetch and winter wheat and told me on Saturday to come out here and plant the cover crops to protect the soil and capture the nitrogen from the atmosphere for uh, next spring's uh, plantings. Tomorrow, and the reason is tomorrow it's supposed to rain. So Sunday has a 50% chance of rain, isolated thunder showers. It's pretty exciting. It's been nine weeks since we've got any rain. So yesterday we had harvested uh, winter squash like pumpkins, butternut squash, delicatas, uh, red curry squash, kabocha squashes. So while I was driving over here, I saw this massive pumpkin field and I thought it'd be kind of cool to show you guys a second style of pumpkin farming. Let's go check it out. So this is what we call a monoculture pumpkin field. A monoculture is vast amounts of the same thing, same varietal, all planted at the same time on lots and lots of acreage. And this poses three problems. The first problem is when you're planting the exact same thing, the same varietal through the whole property, if you get a bacteria, fungal, some sort of disease in your field, it'll spread through the whole thing, which forces you to spray chemicals on your field to prevent that. The second issue is the insect issue. So all of these plants are going to flower at the exact same time, which means that the bees can come over there and hang out and get what they need for the pollen. But then when the flower is gone, that's it. There are no more flowers. There's nothing else growing there. So beneficial insects, uh, they feed on nectar as they get older from the flowers and then they lay their eggs near uh, where the pests are at, where the food source is going to be, because as baby beneficial insects feed off of other insects. And the third issue is that uh, there is no other life source out here. There are no trees because it's inefficient for a tractor to drive around a tree when you're planting hundreds and hundreds of acreage. So there are no trees over here to, for birds to hang out in. There is no, um, there's nothing, there's no food for deer. There's no food for rabbits. Um, it's just a vast amounts of pumpkins. There are a lot of monocultures. Our society is based off of monocultures. There's like pretty much everything you could think of is grown in vast quantities at the grocery store. So you have like potato chips, um, cookies, sugar, flour, corn, soybeans, flour for bread. Like, there are a lot of monocultures out there, and they're not very great for, this, for the environment. But that, those are the three issues that are wrong with monocultures these days. Uh, 
Uh, just so you guys can see how many pumpkins are out here, I'm gonna turn on the drone, fly it around a little bit, and you can see how many pumpkins are out there. These pumpkins are actually for like the cans of pumpkin puree that are made for um, the, your pumpkin pies that you'll be eating for Thanksgiving. And actually, if you take a look at them, they look a lot like butternut squash, which makes me think that Henry always says that butternut squashes make better pumpkin pies than pumpkin themselves, which leads me to believe that this pumpkin manufacturer is not growing pumpkins. They're actually growing butternut squash. So I'm going out on a limb here and thinking that those cans of pumpkin puree are actually cans of butternut squash puree. And so maybe we should start calling it squash pie. If it rains tonight, are you gonna go outside and jump up and down and <laughs> and scream in the sky? Yeah. No, I'm gonna sleep really good. <laughs> <laughs> It's getting pretty dark out here and we're getting really excited because we have a chance of rain. So starting at like 8 p.m. we have a 30% chance, 9 p.m. is 70, and at 11 p.m. we have a 100% chance of rain. 
we're really at our fingers crossed. They're hoping that it doesn't uh, go around our farm like usual, but 100%, that's pretty good. I think so. So I asked Henry earlier, we're gonna do the rain dance. We're gonna go outside and jump up and down if it starts raining and start screaming in the skies. He said that he's gonna sleep like a baby. So what we have going on here right now is Henry and I have just uh, measured out all of our plots for next year. Uh, 200 feet long by 200 feet long, perfect squares. We have a spot going on right here. This is where the garlic is going to be planted as well as the overwintering spinach. And then uh, we measured a few spots over here. There's two more plots over there and we have uh, a long one here. This is a double long one. This is 400 feet long, 200 foot long rows, but the whole length is 400 feet. So we're going to go ahead and mow this down and this is going to be ready for spring of 2018.